To kick things off, let's start by breaking down the three most common zone 2 heart rate calculation formulas that many beginners, including myself, rely on at the start of their zone 2 training journey. The MATH 180 formula, where MATH is the abbreviation of maximum aerobic function, developed by Dr. Phil Mathetone, is probably the simplest formula to calculate zone 2 heart rate. Subtract your age from 180, then adjust based on your health and fitness level. For example, subtract 5 beats from that number if recovering from an illness or injury, or add 5 beats if you have been training consistently for over two years without setback and you arrive at a heart rate number that will be your maximum aerobic heart rate. Your zone 2 heart rate ceiling should be just below this number. Now using myself as an example, I'm 46 years old and based on the MAV 180 formula, my maximum aerobic heart rate is 134 beats per minute. Calculating zone 2 heart rate based on percentage of max heart rate is quite confusing from the get-go. Google it and the information you find is rather contradicting. Some consider zone 2 to be between 60 to 70% of maximum heart rate, while others consider zone 2 as 70 to 80% of max heart rate. Well, spoiler alert, my lactate determines zone 2 sits somewhere between 70 to 80% of my maximum heart rate. So let's just use this range for now, but this range still overshoots my zone 2 slightly. Well, if I had trained strictly using this calculation, I might have been pushing just a bit too hard, reducing fat burning efficiency. Well anyway, more on that later in this video. As the name suggests, we would need to know our maximum heart rate for this calculation, but testing for maximum heart rate can be challenging for most individuals due to the intensity and risk involved. Accurately determining maximum heart rate requires performing a graded exercise protocol up to almost an all-out sprint, which is physically demanding and can be daunting or even unsafe for some people, particularly those with underlying health conditions or low fitness levels. Many people instead then rely on a commonly used 200 and 20 minus their age formula, but this in itself lacks reliability. Based on this formula, my maximum heart rate should be 174 beats per minute as I'm 46 years old, but my tested maximum heart rate is actually 179 beats per minute. That's 5 beats off. Nonetheless, if we use my actual max heart rate of 179 beats per minute, 70 to 80% of that puts my zone 2 range between 125 to 143 beats per minute. The Carbonin formula defines heart rate zones by incorporating maximum heart rate, resting heart rate, and heart rate reserve in an effort to achieve greater accuracy. Heart rate reserve is calculated by subtracting resting heart rate from maximum heart rate. The Carbonin formula also uses an intensity range of between 60% to 70% for zone 2. This percentage is then applied to our heart rate reserve and our resting heart rate is added to this number. For example, my maximum heart rate is 179 beats per minute and my resting heart rate is 55 beats per minute. 179 minus 55 gives me a heart rate reserve of 124 beats per minute. To calculate my zone 2 with the Carvanen formula, I would multiply my heart rate reserve of 124 beats per minute by 60% and again by 70% then add my resting heart rate to both numbers to get my zone 2 range. That will give me a range between 129 beats per minute and 142 beats per minute using this formula. This table here shows my zone 2 heart rate range based on these three formulas. For the MATH 180 formula, my zone 2 heart rate ceiling or my maximum aerobic heart rate is 134 beats per minute. When using 70 to 80% of my maximum heart rate, my zone 2 range is between 125 to 143 beats per minute. And finally, the Carvanen formula puts my zone zone 2 range between 129 beats per minute and 142 beats per minute. Before we find out how that compares with my blood lactate levels during the test, let's first define zone 2 and talk about what the gold standards of zone 2 testing are. The best definition I found defines zone 2 as an exercise intensity that stimulates the most mitochondria function, the most fat oxidation, and the most lactate clearance. And it mainly recruits type 1 muscle fibers, also known as slow twitch fibers. It is also the maximum level of effort that one can maintain with without accumulating lactate. Lactate is still produced, but at this effort level, the clearance rate of lactate is matched with the production rate, resulting in no buildup of lactate. The maximum blood lactate concentration before lactate starts to build up is about 2 millimolars per liter, with the zone 2 sweet spot sitting somewhere between 1.7 to 2 millimolars per liter. Since zone 2 is a definition of mitochondrial function, fat oxidation, and lactate clearance. The best ways to measure zone 2 would be to measure the exercise intensity that stimulates either the most mitochondrial growth, the most fat oxidation, or the most lactate clearance. Outside of a laboratory setting, the most accessible option of the three is lactate testing, which is what I'm using today. Now let's go over to the gym and conduct the test. I recorded my blood lactate readings at various heart rates at intervals of about 10 beats per minute, and I got eight blood lactate readings across my entire heart rate range, starting at rest and between 
between 115 to 175 beats per minute. When I stopped to test my lactate at each targeted heart rate, my heart rate would obviously drop. So when I started running again, I would take about two minutes to bring my heart rate up to the next targeted heart rate. And I aim to maintain each targeted heart rate for three minutes. It was definitely a lot easier maintaining a heart rate of 125 beats per minute for three minutes than maintaining a heart rate of 175 beats per minute. The same three minutes felt like eternity at 175 beats per minute. I tabulated my results on this graph with heart rate on the x-axis and blood lactate in millimolars per liter on the y-axis. Before I started running, I tested my blood lactate at rest, which was about 73 beats per minute. I got a reading of 3.1 millimolars per liter. It was pretty high as I was carrying over some fatigue and residual lactate from the previous day's workout session. But when I took my heart rate up to 115 beats per minute, my lactate dropped to 2.2 millimolars per liter. This happened because lactate is a byproduct of the anaerobic glycolysis system and once more oxygen became available when I went from rest to exercising at a low intensity, the lactate began to metabolize and it turned into water resulting in a drop in blood lactate concentration. When I got up to 125 beats per minute, my lactate dropped again to 2.1 millimolars per liter and at 135 beats per minute, my lactate started to stabilize at 2.0 millimolars per liter which is the blood lactate ceiling for zone 2. When I took my heart rate up to 145 beats per minute. My lactate shot up to 4.2 millimolars per liter, but very interestingly, it dropped again pretty drastically back down to 2.7 millimolars per liter at 155 beats per minute. Based on my understanding, the drop in lactate at that intensity is typically due to the increased cardiac output and oxygen delivery to working muscles, which enhances lactate metabolism as well as the reuse of lactate as an energy substrate by certain tissues such as the heart, kidneys, and slow twitch muscle fibers. But if you have a better explanation for this drop in lactate as I cross over into zone 3 and 4, I would absolutely love to hear it if you could share it by writing in the comment section below. Now let's compare those formulas with my blood lactate levels during the test. From doing the lactate test, my blood lactate concentration of 2 millimolars per liter corresponds to about 135 beats per minute. That is probably where my zone 2 heart rate ceiling sits. Comparing that to the 134 beats per minute derived from the MAF 180 formula, I have to say that it's pretty spot on. When calculating using 70 to 80% of maximum heart Heart rate. My zone 2 range is 125 to 143 beats per minute. 135 beats per minute sits right in the middle of this range, which is at 75% of maximum heart rate. At 135 beats per minute, my lactate was already at 2.0 millimolars per liter, meaning that I should not go above this if I want to train in zone 2. So a range of up to 80% of maximum heart rate is too high for me. A better range for me would be 70 to 75% of maximum heart rate. And finally, the Carvenant formula puts my zone 2 range between a 129 and 142 beats per minute. Again, similar to the percentage of max heart rate calculation, the top end of this range is too high for my zone 2 range. Thus, when using the Carvenon formula, I should be using 60 to 65% as my zone 2 range instead of 60 to 70%. So, what's the takeaway from all this data? While these formulas provide a helpful starting point, there are no substitute for individualized data like lactic testing. But if that isn't feasible, you can get pretty close to finding your zone 2 heart rate range by using one of these formulas along with the insights you gain from my results. Just bear in mind that everyone's physiology is different and because of that, the rate that my body clears and builds up lactate is going to be different from yours. That said, although the specific numbers may differ slightly for you, the overall trend will remain relatively consistent, giving you a good baseline to use as a starting point. If you want to learn more about the amazing benefits of zone 2 training, watching this video here will help you with that. Thank you for watching and getting to the end of this video. Like and subscribe if the content I share brings value to you and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this video as well as how you arrive at your zone 2 heart rate range. Share your experiences in the comments below and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.